Hi, it's me, Jeff, the SP Spaz, back for another educational video. And uh, this is an important one because it's, uh, it's one that addresses some misconceptions or myths. And, um, you know, if you may, you may have seen my video, SP Myth and Truth, where I kind of uh, broke down some of the stereotypes about sensing perceiving types in the Myers-Briggs system. And here on this week's edition of Type Tuesday, I'm going to tell you what the Myers-Briggs letters actually tell you. So, uh, there's, there's a lot of misinformation uh, on the internet about... Uh, Typology, the Myers-Briggs system, uh, Carl Jung, David Kersey, all of those, uh, and many more. Um, and one of the things that I see rampant, and I've you know made a video about this already, is people misusing Myers-Briggs type letters. And so when I talk about that, a lot of people may say, well, Jeff, why don't you tell us what do these letters actually indicate? What, what does it tell you as opposed to what does it not tell you? Um, because... A lot of people uh, say, oh, well, that person is an ENTP, therefore uh, it means they're a scientist. Okay, obviously that's not true. Um, other people say, well, it indicates uh, that here is the following set in stone order of eight functions. That also is not true. So what does being a certain type actually tell you? Well, Going to the Myers-Briggs uh, Foundation themselves, you know, going right to the source, uh, the people who actually, you know, uh, are the ones responsible for the information. Obviously, Isabel Myers was responsible for it originally, uh, but she's long gone by now. Uh, and some of her legacy is great, unfortunately, of people have distorted and misused things she came up with. Uh, the number one thing that you have to know is Isabel Myers did contend that the MBTI itself uh, led you to knowing what your primary or dominant function was uh, in the Jungian sense. But there really was no particular proof of that. It's just the theory she had and felt like this is a way to get at it. Now, the reason I say there's no proof of that is that the actual Myers-Briggs type indicator, even the original one, much less, you know, the revised and updated editions. They don't actually ask questions to determine which Jungian functions you supposedly use the most. They actually ask questions about what you do behavior-wise in certain situations. And there is no particular reason to believe that those answers, as far as what you would do in certain situations, uh, indicate particular actual cognitive functions happening. They can tell you preferences is what they can tell you. And basically looking at the website, they break it down this way. Uh, it says the Myers-Briggs type indicator, MBTI step one, is based on Carl Jung's theory of psychological type. It indicates your personality preferences in four dimensions, where you focus your attention, extroversion or introversion, the way you take in information, sensing or intuition, how you make decisions, thinking or feeling, and how you deal with the world, judging or perceiving. The four letters that make up your personality type can help you to understand yourself and your interactions with others. Okay, that's the main thing I wanna get across in this video is that is actually all that, that, that the MBTI type tells you. For instance, my type ESFP tells me only four preferences, that I prefer extroversion over introversion, and I prefer sensing over intuition. I prefer feeling over thinking, and I prefer perceiving over judging. That is literally all it tells you. It does not say, uh, here is a list or an order of functions that I have. It does not say I'm going to be a world famous showbiz star. So in either direction you take it, either concrete stereotypes of occupations or actions in the world, uh, are, are an assumption, um, speculation, not proven. And also, if you take it inward and say, this 
type shows that my brain operates in the following way and starts trying to plug in all of these me uh, methods and um, situations in which I'm supposedly using Jungian functions. Um, that also is speculation. Now, I'm not going to say that, um, that some of those things can't be true in terms of my brain may be working in a way that sounds similar to something Carl Jung came up with when he came up with the idea of, say, extroverted sensing or introverted feeling. In fact, when I read descriptions of those things, and of course, there's a bunch of conflicting definitions of those too. But if you look at Carl Jung's original writings on the subject, uh, there are some things in there where I say, okay, this, this does seem to line up with some of the way I think about things uh, in terms of my perception of it. But the important thing to remember is that anything beyond the four preferences is speculation. It's not provable fact. There is no, okay, this person is ESTJ, therefore I know exactly the way their brain works in the following ways. Uh, a lot of that function order stuff uh, comes from uh, a person named John Beebe, I believe, uh, who made sort of a model of functions. Um, that, that I think was one of the, I won't say worst, I hesitate to, to bag on the guy, I don't know him, uh, and I haven't read most of what he actually wrote, but I think it was detrimental to uh, typology, uh, interjecting that kind of um, speculation because a lot of people follow it as if it's like this Bible um, that tells you, uh, oh, this this person is, you know, is late for class, therefore they're using their seventh function, whatever, you know, it's like there's no reason to waste time going into those things. Like, and, and again, like I always say, if, if you're, if that's what you enjoy doing, you know, knock yourself out. But what I'm talking about in terms of sort of the community of typology or getting people to understand each other better and use type in a way that actually benefits people, uh, those kinds of um, distractions, I'll put it that way, really don't serve any purpose. Um, so that that's the the number one thing that I'm trying to get across um, is that the next time that you're in any kind of type forum um, and you see someone say, oh, um, you know, the the ENTJ's sixth function is whatever. I didn't bother to memorize those because I don't care um, that they don't know that they're making something up. I won't say they're making something up, but they're perpetuating something that was made up without any actual proof of it because that's not what Myers-Briggs actually says. There, there's no, if you look at all of the actual literature um, from Isabel Myers and, and MBTI uh, Foundation and all the official stuff, you're not gonna find anything about like a trickster function or you know any of those things, like it, it's not there. Somebody at some point made that up and a bunch of other people copied it and then people started swallowing it as if it was something proven and it's not. So that was what I wanted to do with this video was establish that before. And, and if you're somebody who, you know, you watch this, you listen and you say, well, I'm not going to, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, good. You know, this is a way for you to sort of get the idea that you don't want to listen to me anymore and you'd rather go somewhere else. Uh, and I'm fine with that. Um, what I want to do with this was for the people that actually care to know this stuff and, uh, and understand what it actually means, um, this was sort of the starting point. I thought about doing, you know, just a what is typology video, but that was a little bit vague and generic. And most people who are going to watch a video about it at all um, know the very basic stuff. But there's a lot of, like I said, misconceptions about the MBTI. And if you if you read the actual MBTI and even some of the knockoff versions like the human metrics and, and things like that, you'll see if you read those questions that there's nothing in there that actually indicates any sort of order of preference of functions. Now, there are certain tests online that do also do that, but those do not actually tell you Myers-Briggs type because, again, they're not the same thing. So uh, there, before anybody jumps on me too much about that, there is a reasonable amount of evidence that the so-called function pair 
you know, what usually gets referred to as uh, dominant and secondary functions um, or auxiliary, I guess some people say, um, that those sort of do line up with the types. But basically, it, the more that you add on that, the more that you speculate as to sort of functions beyond that, the more like a different types you're actually creating in terms of because if, if, if the numbers, if the, you want the numbers to be symmetrical <laughs> and you say uh, there's 16 types. See, because ba- Jung only had eight. He had eight uh, dominant function types. So if you, you've added a whole secondary layer when you say 16 types, so that therefore you have a function pair. If you go to a third, then you've multiplied that again. But nobody seems to do that or accept that or realize that they all act like, Oh, that's just another part of this same 16. It isn't. If you add that, you're adding another group, which some people are fine with. I mean, people that are into Enneagram, I mean, there's like nine types, but then there's wings and tri types and all the, and um, like instinctual variants, all this stuff that makes like hundreds and thousands of types when you all get it, when you break down each one of those differences. So, like I said, if you're into just sort of, you know, just going deep in the weeds of theory, then by all means, you know, do that. But what I'm trying to get at, what I'm trying to do is sort of simplify the basics where we get rid of some of that type confusion. We have less people who go into, say, Facebook groups for Myers-Briggs type and are confused by all this. They're bombarded with all this information that is not helpful. And it doesn't help not only for them understanding themselves or their friends, relatives, spouses, anything like that, that is actually what they're trying to do with type. So I'm trying to focus. I'm not trying, the whole thing is not set up for me to try to pump myself up as being the Lord of typology in some way. In fact, I can't stand other people who do that. So I'm the last one who's going to want to do that for for myself. Uh, So what I'm, and I'm, and this, the purpose of this isn't even to just to diss people who, you know, are Jung theists, basically, you know, the worship at the altar of Carl Jung, which I don't, but I think he did come up with some useful things. But anyway, this is already longer than I wanted it to be. I want it to be a short kind of introduction, but hopefully even if you uh, tune, if, if people tune in for the first few minutes, they got the basics of what the MBTI actually means. And they'll, maybe somebody will get it through their heads uh, to not keep perpetuating the myths about what the letters indicate. Um, All right, so if you haven't already subscribed, please do. um, And be sure to like this video and share it with all of your friends and all of the people who seem to think that being an ENFP means that you're automatically on a moon rocket at all times. And we'll see you next time for another exciting edition of Type Tuesday. (music) 